I'm here with Ticats quarterback Jeff Matthews. And Jeff, uh, welcome to Canada. The question I have for you is, you have a baby face. Have you tried to buy beer in the province of Ontario yet? Uh, I haven't yet. I have, I've been I've been fortunate though. You know, I got I got friends who uh, you know look old enough where they have a beard and stuff. So I, somehow I get in. But uh, yeah, I've been told that quite a few times. You've, you've been but you've been carded trying to buy buy beer. I mean, it's 21 <laughs> in the states, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. I get card. I'll get carded until I'm 30, probably. But, you know, that's life. So. <laughs> um, how has the adjustment to the Canadian game been? You look very comfortable on Monday, and I'm just wondering how that's been for you. Yeah, you know, uh, I think we did a good job Monday. Uh, we executed what we wanted to do. I mean, the thing is, you know, every day is a growing process. You know, not, you know, you want to be better every day, and some days uh, you don't perform uh, to up to your own expectations, and then you got to figure out what I do wrong and grow and learn from it. I mean, it's all it's all a process, really. I mean, you got to go through this whole camp, and some days are better than others, and the ones that aren't so good, you got to make them uh, take as much out of it as you can and make the next one better. Did Kent Austin dissect the game film with you, and was he was he was he were there, were there things you could have done better? Yeah, you, you know, there's always things you can do better. Is is whatever it could be uh, you know we always try to think about okay well this is what we got here you know what if we got a different look what you know and you just try to think through the game as much as possible so next time maybe you get something a little bit different you're prepared for that look also uh, so it's really uh, you know that film was really good I thought we had some big plays on it also some mistakes uh, but then ultimately you're able to think through the game at, at a different level and really you know hopefully that helps us moving forward uh, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, your sister and, and what your relationship is with her. She obviously uh, s suffered uh, a car accident, what, 2006, yeah. and is a quadriplegic, yeah. but you seem to have a – has she been inspiring to you, I guess is the question. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's the most inspiring person I've ever met, and especially in my life. So, I mean, she's unbelievable. Her and I are extremely close. She's been texting me day in and day out, asking me how things are going. I mean, she, you know, i got to talk to her a little bit about the game, and it's just – uh, you know, she's an unbelievable person and has gone through so much. And I think uh, when you look at her life and some of the obstacles that were put in front of her and how she just kind of ran through them and, and broke them down, and uh, it, it really is incredible uh, when you're told, you know, in her situation that, you know, she's not going to be able to do certain things. And then she goes, I don't care what you're going to tell me. I'm going to go do it, you know, and she does consistently. So uh, she's amazing. You know, I try to spend as much time out there as I can with her. I'm sure she'll get out here hopefully in a little while. But uh, she's definitely, you know, probably the person I'm closest to her and, and my mom and dad and and uh, you know she's really uh, an inspiration to me and, and one of the best people I've ever met. I wonder too I mean when you look at you know when you play football and, and that sort of thing there are setbacks and things like that but I wonder if, if you know having someone like that in your life it, it allows you to sort of keep things in perspective about what's important and what's difficult you know in, in, right. in the real sense. Yeah definitely I mean you know those things in life happen and, and you realize that's bigger than, than sports bigger than football uh, but ultimately she's an inspiration not because only what she's gone through, but who the person that she is, and, and she's so positive, and that's what's so amazing. Is you know, there's never a time where she has something negative to say. You know, she's always positive, she's always upbeat, and uh, that's what's amazing because uh, it's not just her o overcoming, you know, some some obstacles, but it's more so uh, that she does it with a smile on her face, and and uh, you know, will bring everybody along with her and have fun, and and uh, her positivity is really infectious, and, and that's what uh, you know most impressive to me about her. Your good friend and college teammate Luke Tasker yeah. uh, said that you drive an OT, O2 uh, Jeep Cherokee and s described it to me as a piece of crap. Is that a no. fair description? Oh, oh, oh hey, Luke. <laughs> Those are fighting words there. It's an o, it's an, uh, 2000. O, o, great car. Yeah, great car. It's still in great shape. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, I keep it uh, clean over there in the parking lot. It's tough. We got the wind blown, but I take care of it pretty good. You know, it's got close to 200,000 miles on it now still runs like a charm you know I've taken it from Montana to Buffalo a couple times so that baby uh is, is doing well for me right now and I really uh I really like it so hopefully it can hang on for a little while until I get a new one but yeah it's it's uh my first car that I've ever bought with my own money and I love it so I'm hoping to hang on for it for a while so now if you make this team and start getting game checks I mean can you oh no no I'm not buying a new car no I won't buy a new car unless I have to I don't want to put it I'm, I'm saving all my money I'm a cheap guy I, I need you know, a car, a fly rod, and, and uh, you know, I guess a tent, and I can I can be happy in the off season. So other than that, from Montana, uh, that's that's how you describe yourself, right? I know you've yeah. lived in California, right. you've lived in a couple of different places, but you think of yourself as a Montana guy, an outdoors guy. Yeah, you know, that's what I love to do. Uh, you know, unfortunately, my dad, uh, I was born there, and then my dad moved back there when I was in college and retired uh, from being a police officer. So, uh, you know, it's good to go back. It, a great little town in West Yellowstone there, and. Uh, you know, we get to go fishing a lot, you know, and take the dog out, you know, biking, we go horseshoeing in the winter. I mean, it's, there's everything to do outdoors, and, and I mean, that's an amazing place to feel, uh, feel, you know, you feel small in the world when you're out there, and, and that's, that's kind of a nice feeling, kind of relaxing, and just, hey, this is a special place, and enjoy being there. 
Luke says your biggest vice, chocolate. He says that that's your thing. He says you're you're kind of weird about it. That's what he told me. Yeah, you know, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of picky with the chocolate. I eat, you know I have to say that. You know, uh, I like chocolate dip cones, uh, but only certain ones. I think McDonald's has the best ones, <laughs> which is which sounds crazy, I know, but. Um, the other thing is I love Dove chocolate, so Hershey's is just average to me, but if I can get nice Dove chocolate, you know, sometimes you go dark, sometimes you go milk chocolate, so that, that's really uh, my favorite thing there. You're a chocolate connoisseur, is that yeah. fair to say? <laughs> I don't think I'm a connoisseur, I'm not too picky, don't get me wrong, if there's only Hershey's there, I'm going to eat it, but uh, <laughs> I do I do prefer Dove. Welcome to, uh, to Canada, enjoy the chocolate. I appreciate it, thank you, I guess I'll have to go uh, to the store and figure everything out here, so I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank you, thank Bye. you very much.